In this demo, we will show you how to leverage incident workflows to automate your incident response process. This use case will cover standardizing major incident workflows across all P1 and P2 incidents. Many of your customers define major incidents as a P1 or P2. Let's start by creating a workflow titled Major Incident Workflow, which will run for all incidents that meet this criteria. To start out with, we need to add a workflow trigger, which defines how and when a workflow is kicked off. We want to trigger a workflow based on priority, so let's use a conditional trigger. Here we can indicate that the trigger should evaluate to true whenever the incident is a P1 or P2, and we can apply the workflow across all services. You could even set priority using event orchestration and have your incident workflow pick up that change as a trigger for the major incident workflow. In addition to the conditional trigger, we also want to provide responders with a way to manually trigger this workflow from surfaces like Slack, Microsoft Teams, mobile, and desktop. So let's add a manual trigger as well. Now that our triggers are set up, let's go through and add some actions that we may want to include in our major incident workflow. To begin, let's create a per incident Slack channel so responders can effectively communicate in one place. In this example, we are using double curly brackets to insert the incident number as part of the channel name. However, you could use the same format for referencing other incident variables as well. Next, we want to ensure that there is an incident commander and ops lead added to each major incident. To do so, we can set up an action to add the corresponding escalation policies, which will automatically add them to the incident response. We can continue to add actions for important pieces of our workflow, including subscribing the right stakeholders, sending status updates, and attaching a Google Meet conference bridge. Here we can see an example of what a completed major incident workflow might look like. When we're ready, we will publish this workflow. This workflow is ready to go. It will now automatically trigger on all P1 and P2 incidents and can be run manually by responders. Let's see what that looks like in action. A newly created incident just came in. If it had been marked as a P1, the workflow would have been triggered automatically. However, it doesn't have a designated priority. As a responder, I may decide I need to run it through the major incident workflow. To trigger the newly created major incident workflow, I will set the priority to a P2. Sure enough, we can now see a new Slack channel was created and linked to the incident, an incident commander and ops lead are added, and a conference bridge has been added. And if we jump over to the status updates tab, we can now see that a team has been subscribed. And the status update has gone out. This was just one example of incident workflows, our powerful new capability to automate the incident response process and free up responders to focus on more critical tasks. To learn more, visit us at pagerduty.com and sign up for a free trial.